you see the thumbnail and you're probably like, wow, this is like, it looks like one of those like filters you put on like uh, Snapchat now or whatever for like making yourself look old. And I agree, <laughs> it actually looks like that. But this is the video that goes along with that that I recorded a few minutes later. So as you can see, it's not a filter. <laughs> That's actually what I looked like in 2017. What's up guys, Derek, morepolitesmoredates.com. Today we are going to be talking about skincare again. So as you guys probably know, I did a video in uh, November 22nd, 2020 called I Started Tretinoin, dot, dot, dot. And basically in that video, I elaborate on how I started taking skincare more seriously. Um, I got a Tretinoin prescription through my HRT clinic. Prior to that, I was using Tretinoin from just like an Indian pharmacy online. And I have since worked my way up to 0.03. And I don't really know if there's a point of tapering up anymore because these studies seem to imply that if you go higher, you're, you're sort of like reaching the point of homeostasis perhaps quicker, but at the expense of more skin irritation. And like ultimately, even if you're using 0 0.025, 0 0.03, you're sort of gonna eventually get to that homeostatic you know, like max out point, regardless of your percentage, but it might take a longer time. At least that's what it seems to imply, but I don't know if that's the case. You know, I would think you would get a greater effect from a higher concentration, but, and you would taper up to that and titrate up accordingly based on your tolerance. But I don't know yet, to be honest, I'm still sort of a newbie to the whole thing. So I'm uh, learning as I go, but the 0 0.03 is like relatively irritating to the point where I'm getting like dried cracked skin all around my mouth, um, around my nose, stuff like that. And, but it's fine. Like, obviously that is an expected outcome and it's not so bad that it's intolerable. So, um, just stay moisturized, say blah, blah, blah. I do the same shit I've been doing and I'm trying to adhere to it very strictly. So what I've been using is, uh, the same thing, you know, the uh, hyaluronic acid serum, um, the uh, moisturizer, exfoliating cleanser. Basically, the only things we really sell are things I thought that were worth getting. So that's what I'm using. And I get it for free now, fortunately, which is uh, um, very nice because it's just another thing I don't have to spend money on is my skincare routine. First step is I use the exfoliating cleanser. Then after that, with the water still on my face after I've washed it off, is I apply the hyaluronic acid serum. Um, and then after that, I use the, uh, the Kosh moisturizer too, but I mix that with the Pharma Tretinoin and I put that on and, um, yeah, that's like the gist of the protocol. And then obviously have a good sunscreen throughout the day. We really should get a good sunscreen. We don't have one yet, but that should be on my to-do list to do that. Cause that's obviously a no brainer to have a good sunscreen product uh, through your company. So that should be uh, next on the to-do list. But um, that, you know, I don't notice a significant difference, but one thing I did wanna bring up that I thought was crazy was going back to some of my old 2017 content, I didn't realize how fucked up I was making my skin at the time. And you know, I've often talked about how I neglected my skincare for years, like even up until relatively recently, I just didn't really do anything whatsoever and I would do not only nothing, but I would use Milano tan and go stand in tanning beds and do dumb shit like that. So um, I thought this was an interesting uh, before and after to show um, just how like dead looking I really was from doing absolutely nothing and just abusing the shit out of my skin. So this is, you see the thumbnail and you're probably like, wow, this is like, it looks like one of those like filters you put on like uh, Snapchat now or whatever for like making yourself look old. And I agree, <laughs> it actually looks like that. But this is the video that goes along with that that I recorded a few minutes later. So as you can see, it's not a filter. <laughs> That's actually what I looked like in 2017. This was May 7th, 2017, almost uh, four years ago at this point. So wild, wild to see. But um, this was not the result of deploying a skincare routine rather it was the result of avoiding shit that nukes your skin so that is the most important thing that i want to bring up today is not that you know you're gonna get a miracle from fucking using random skincare products because obviously they can help but at the end of the day sunscreen and not abusing the shit out of your skin in the sun even though it seems like a sick idea to get tanned especially when you're in bodybuilding and stuff you know having a good tan is great and blah 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 i used to think the exact same thing and i thought milano tan oh because it can get me tanned so much easier 
I'm just going to get barely any sun exposure and not really harm myself and get like uber protection because I produce way more melanin than I should and I won't, you know, age my skin really. And it wasn't the case. Like this is the kind of shit I was walking around looking like four years ago. So just stopping that had a significant improvement on my skin quality, obviously. And that was even before doing, I still wasn't doing anything for skincare at that point. So if you want to see some of those old videos, like this is another one on the channel. I recorded this. Some of this is lighting too, by the way. It's not like it was that drastic. Like I know this looks like I'm literally fucking dying in the video here, but some of this is lighting too. Like I had a horrible setup. I had like much worse recording equipment and whatnot. This is a little bit different lighting in the, uh, I think this was two days before that on my fat and strong or ripped and weak video from uh, May 3rd, 2017. So anyway, that's what I looked like there. You can see sort of like the same, uh... oh, also sleep. I was literally like pulling all nighters and this makes you look fucking dead as well. So don't do that. Get your at least eight hours sleep. Ideally, you know, I I'm still at, you know, I'm still not perfect. You know, I try to get my eight hours every night, but I work like a madman but it's definitely a better and more sustainable schedule than I was doing here where I was pulling at least one 24 hour all nighter once a week, which was just absolutely horrible. And it would reflect in the quality of my presentation quite significantly. So don't fuck up your skin in the sun and don't <laughs> skip sleep. Like none of the skincare products are going to do anything that is going to mitigate that kind of stuff. This was uh, June 10th. I think like three weeks after that, uh, the death video, and you can see me here and uh, a little bit uh, pudgier, but um, I'll do a couple of comparisons actually of me because I was actually like like pretty lean here at May 3rd. So seeing me now, um, I'm obviously like, I'm bulking right now. So my face is obviously a lot uh, fatter than it was here. So this is a more recent comparison to my skin, August 5th, 2020. Um, this was obviously me sitting in the exact same spot I am right now. Um, and you know, I think it looks, this was even before I was doing the, the tretinoin, if I recall correctly though. So this is just the result of not fucking myself up, you know, like that is the most important thing at the end of the day is don't fuck yourself up. And then anything above and beyond that is like icing on the cake, obviously. And then I think this is, uh, um, this is relatively recent October 12th. And uh, the most recent was November 22nd. I started tretinoin and yeah, there I am. I've been talking about, I think I was already using the Indian one for a couple, uh, the Indian generic one for a couple months at that point or something. And I had the pharma one and I just started that one relatively recently. And then that one's, I've been on it for, you know, a handful of months at this point, I think. I didn't even really track when I started it, to be honest, but it's at least been, you know, a handful of months or something. I don't, I don't really know, at least a few months. But so I'm not expecting like massive changes from what I understand the changes typically come in at like the year mark or more, you know, it seems like something you need to be pretty patient with. But what I can say has made the most difference is sleep and not fucking up my skin in the sun. So if there's anything you can take away from this when you are, you know, young and you think, you know, having a tan is great and, you know, you're invincible, so you don't need to sleep and it's better to, you know, have less hours of sleep so you can have more hours awake and get stuff done. Your quality of work is so much worse during those hours you're awake when you're actually restricting yourself of sleep. The net amount of work you get done is actually lower and the quality is worse. So getting that extra two hours sleep per day or actually getting to sleep in general, not pulling all nighters is going to net you more work done at higher quality, even though you're actually asleep for longer. Like that's just, that's one of the main things I've realized over the years in this, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, as I used to try and cut corners, do the Gary Vaynerchuk, like I'll fucking, I'll sleep when I'm dead kind of mentality, but it doesn't really work. Like, I'm sure he doesn't advocate all nighters either. It's just, you know, that really hardcore, like fucking work till you're <laughs> work till you're literally like falling apart, basically. Um, that mentality does not, you know, translate into high quality work I've found. So now I try to really prioritize sleep as much as I can. Still not perfect, but certainly better than I was in the 2017 image here where I was just literally fucking dying. And then, um, you know, the staying out of the sun, like, like I go in the sun, but when I do, I make sure I'm protected and I don't do it excessively. I don't like literally stand there and fuck myself up on purpose now. And then uh, I'm hoping the recent additions, obviously circling back to the skincare thing of the, uh, the youth serum thing, the hyaluronic acid serum we have, the moisturizer, 
um, the having a good sunscreen, tretinoin, moisturizing, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully that helps kind of like reverse some of the damage I induced when I was younger because that was definitely a poor decision on my part and I definitely regret it. But it's better, you know, sooner, better sooner than later. You know, I've seen some individuals that abuse the fuck out of themselves for decades and it's kind of like, I don't think there's really going back when you don't have that kind of uh, elasticity of like, you know, your cell repair is kind of like so fucking shitty because you're, you know, in your 40s or whatever, it's a lot harder to kind of bounce back. So hopefully, you know, I can do that to some extent. I'm just happy I caught it sooner than later. So, but anyways, that is the skincare update, I guess. Um, the stuff isn't a miracle, obviously, but the main thing is going to be mitigating damage. It's almost like hair loss. You know, it's easier to prevent it than to reverse it kind of thing. The same thing with skincare. It's easier to not fuck yourself up to maintain good looking skin rather than fucking it up and then trying to get back to baseline. It's extremely exponentially more difficult to get back the baseline from a damaged state than it is to prevent yourself from getting damaged in the first place. So that is uh, the takeaway at the end of the day. And I, I will keep you guys updated on any of the uh, tretinoin stuff in the uh, future in 2021. And we'll see uh, once I get to the, I don't know, year mark, maybe I'll do another update or nine month mark or something, but so far so good. And it seems to be uh, like relatively well tolerated despite drying out my skin in certain places to a ridiculous degree it seems to be uh, okay otherwise it's not like my skin you know breaks out in a fucking rash or gets like super red to the point that i can't uh even put it on and go out in public so we shall see I'm looking forward to it and uh hopefully it continues to improve so anyways thank you guys for watching like subscribe check out my blog more dates.com follow me on instagram and more places underscore more dates facebook snapchat bitch twitter tiktok apple podcast if you have any experiences with different concentrations of tretinoin like let's say hypothetically we have somebody in the comments who has done, I don't know, like 0 0.025 for like a couple of years. You've like plateaued and then you increase to a higher concentration. Did you in notice improved results above and beyond that? Or was it kind of just the same thing? Because that's what I would want to know as somebody who is currently on 0 0.03. Should, would it be advantageous to have a goal of titrating above and beyond that or just, you know, stick it out long term? That would be something I'd be interested to hear any anecdotal reports on in the comment section is how much of a difference does the concentration make once you have kind of plateaued. So any and all comments would be appreciated, I'm sure, by other people in the comment section who are looking into this stuff. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including the skincare stuff that I use. I use the Pharma Grade Tretinoin through my HRT clinic. Again, though, if you want to get it cheap and you don't care if you have a prescription to, you know, take with you flying or whatever the fuck, you know, you can get it off of random there's like a lot of pharmacies online. You can buy it super cheap, generic. So um, certainly no uh, reason you can't do that. Just a heads up. Um, as far as like the skincare stuff I'm using, I'm using the Kosh um, Hyaluronic Acid Serum, the moisturizer, um, the cleanser, and that stuff is all on the Gorilla Mind site. It'll probably have its own separate company site soon. But that is just like basic shit, by the way. There are tons of companies that make excellent products. For me, it's basically just trying to find everything that I think is worth spending money on or I already spend money on and then making it myself. Like that's, you know, the name of the game for me for entrepreneurship stuff. So it's not very hard for me to figure out what to sell next. It's just like, what do I think is worth spending money on? And people who follow me probably have a similar outlook on what is worth spending money on too. So if you want to support the channel, you can check out the skincare stuff. But um, at the end of the day, it's not a whole lot different than some of the other companies that are selling similar hyaluronic acid serums, you know, a good moisturizer. Um, mine is kind of, uh, I don't know, a little bit thicker. So I, I like how rich it is for my dry skin because sometimes if it's, uh, if it's too thin, it does not uh, work too well or it doesn't last as long as I would like. So I'm um, just a heads up on that. And uh, if you want to support me, anything else in the video description, um, supports the channel, you know, Gorilla Mind Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode Pre-Workout Formulas, um, anything else I'm associated with, it's all down there. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.